right, welcome back everybody for second hour. I'm your host Zen Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed, and we do have joining us for second hour, Mark Sargent. Mark, are you there, brother? I am here. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for the panel. I don't know if you got to hear the first part of the show, but we were talking about the cosmology, and I had asked both Patricia and Carly and Kathy to just share a little bit w about what they think and what they've learned with regard to the cosmology. And so we're going to ask you the same. What do you feel um, uh, about the cosmology? What have you learned and how do you view it now um, in, in the three years you've been studying and looking into this? Uh, okay, so you do, do you want me to kind of reflect on what my idea was of cosmology before I started this thing or just what it is now? Or, yeah, both. Um, what well, be, what it was before and how it's evolved to where you think it is now. Okay. And and, and I apologize to, to the ladies because I was unfortunately on a, another radio show just before this and I literally just jumped off and into uh, out of the frying pan and into the fire, as it were. So mm -hmm. be, before I got into Flat Earth, I was a huge space nut. Huge. Just digested everything that, that NASA put out there and everything that science fiction put out there to where I could not get enough of any any space series, whether it be uh, Star Trek or Star Wars or Stargate or any of the any of the cool movies to where I was enamored with space. You know, why not? It's it's a it's if you're if you're into it, it's a beautiful concept. Yeah, it's really big and really scary and really deadly. But it was an interesting concept, and it, it gave the imagination a place to go. You know, you, you really got to stretch things. You know, it was, it's, it, was a, it was brilliant for writers, people that wanted to write science fiction. Oh, I mean, great, great stuff that you could, that you could create with, with an open universe. Of course, you had to solve question, you know, big problems like uh, these vast, vast, unimaginably huge distances. But they, it was cool. I loved it. And... Then when I got into Flat Earth, I never had that feeling of claustrophobia that some people who write me tell me. It's like, look, you just turned this giant place into a one-room apartment. And I mm -hmm. said, yeah, I get that, and I'm sorry for that part. But at the same time, it's a very intimate, very cozy yes. one, one. It's very manageable. Beforehand, people would talk about, you know, I, I would think that some people question their significance in the universe where you know if you're if the, the if the earth is just this tiny little grain of sand flying at incredible speeds through the galaxy then what are you you're nothing mm. you haven't been here that long to where what was that carl carl sagan speech where he he broke down the timeline and he said you know if it was if if the entire history of the universe was what an hour or a day or something that the human the entire human civilization was like just this just this tiny fraction of a minute that was that was the end of this clock and that's but for me it was different i i felt purpose i felt uh this wonderful attraction to the creative process which which was look at yeah, and you've probably heard me say this before where i fell away from from the church when when i left the island and went to college and was broadened and had all these wonderful experiences and at the same time I lost my spirituality when I was doing that. I mean not all of it, but enough of it. And when I got into this, it was like uh someone had just shook me for an hour, you know, by the shoulders, you know, just rattled me. And then by the time I was done, I was like, "Okay. So this is where I am now." And it makes it, but it made so much more sense. You know, the, the cosmology of, of, and my cosmology might be different from them. Whereas I believe we are in a giant sports stadium, you know, a planetarium, a terrarium, a domed enclosed structure that is meticulously built with extremely clever design uh, schematics and wonderful care. And the automated systems are brilliant. Uh, and it's just so many cool things when you're looking at it from that standpoint. And I know I was lucky because I, I cut my teeth and my career in the game development sector. So I knew a lot about editing and um, uh, how you could create worlds inside of software. 
And once I saw this, it's like, of course, of course, these the little things that make all the difference, how you can change the course of history uh, with just these tiny little adjustments. And uh, it's and, and then, you know, then being humbled, it's like, OK, we are not the first group to be here and we will not be the last. And, you know, another civilization had to had to make way for us and we will have to. And I imagine pretty soon have to make room for the next group that's coming in no different than schools you know eventually you got to graduate you're a senior you gotta go because we got another freshman class coming in uh, you know you had fun and you learned a whole bunch of stuff but it's time to move on and that's where i am now i'm resigned to it and i have lost you know once i finally settled into my new cosmology i slept better than i had in a long long time there you mm, go well Right on. Uh, well, can you also talk about really quickly um, about your presentation and your involvement with the International Flat Earth Conference? Right, right. The conference, the International Conference, most of my presentation uh, will be involving nudity and <laughs> and drinking on stage. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of profanity, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just a normal show is what you're saying. Exactly, it's gonna be nothing yeah. new. People are gonna be like, "Oh God, here goes the clothes." Mm -hmm. Here we go. No, 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 give no. Them, no. Give it, them what they want. No. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's not what they want, because uh, there's gonna be yeah, there's gonna be a lot of cameras there. I, we've had, I mean, just the news recently. What Howard Stern announced he's sending a team uh, two days ago. Oh Ger my gosh. I know German German. Is, is that true? Oh, it's absolutely true. Yeah. He, now he of course is not going to be there in the person because he just right. be, he'd be freaking but, mobbed. Plus he's like six seven, so people he'd stick out like a sore thumb. Stand out, right? But yeah, he's going to be there. Uh, German television just just confirmed today they're going to be there. Uh, Vice media. I mean, I, mean I, I swear the camera teams are going to be fighting over outlets. You know who's got who's got the power strips because I I they're going to be tripping right. over each other. But sorry to be serious, the. Uh, presentation I'm doing and I've changed it like five or six times going into this because initially I thought oh I'll do something cool like a timeline or I'll make it sort of funny or I'll do a uh, you know reflect on you know the different personalities you know I'll do and and then I, I finally realized you know as I was doing more and more interviews I was going you know what this isn't about me uh, you know, it's it's about the people. It's you know, and I mean, with with a group this large, and it's not even as large as it should be. There's no way I'm going to meet everyone that's there. There's no way. I mean, uh, I've been you know with Patricia, we've been to several meetups where there's only 50, 60 people there, and mm -hmm. I at the end of the night, there's still people that are going, hey, bye, Mark. I never even met them, whoever these mm -hmm. people were, because there's only so much time in the day. I mean, even if you spent five minutes with every person there, there is literally is not t enough time in the day to do it. So I modified it, and it's just going to be a Q and A. And I do, I still don't have a lot of time to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to squeeze in a little speech in the beginning, um, where I'm going to talk about. I'm going to do a quick audio fun thing and a quick video fun thing, a uh, quick little history lesson, followed by a poem. I am going to read poetry. Whoa! And, I know, right? And <laughs> you know, come, sweet slumber, and shroud me in thy purple cloak. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> and people are going. <laughs> And then, no, no, I'm, I am going to read a quick little poetry and you'll, it's relevant. People will get it. And then I am going to read a letter I just got from someone uh, regarding you know, that I uh, that really kind of drove home for me what Flat Earth is right now. I'm hoping to cram all that into about seven minutes. And then I'm just going to get in a chair and have people line up and have the MC gra you know, grab a microphone and just start handing it to people. Much, much like what happened with you, Zen, down in Atlanta, mm -hmm. where there's yeah. a line of people. And to make it more enticing, you know, because some people, you know, it's, it's one thing to stand up in front of, ask questions when you only have 30 people in the room. But if you have hundreds and hundreds of people in the room, a uh, right. little yes. different. So I'm going to sign, I've already signed them actually, and I'm going to give out anyone that asks a question, and I don't care what it is. You want to ask me my favorite ice cream, that's fine, you get a card. I'm going to, uh, I've signed uh, Illuminati cards from Illuminati, the New World Order deck, and I'll be giving those to people that, uh, that are in line. And if you are in line, and because there's no way, I mean, how many questions can I do in 45 minutes? Not that mm -hmm. many. 
Um, right. If you're still in line, I will give you a... Um, uh, and you're still in line when the thing ends, uh, then we'll just go down the line and hand cards to whoever's left. And then wh whoever's the last one gets the box. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, is the, is the Vegas card more valuable now? Or you oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, where are they going for on eBay now? 50-something bucks a crack? Are which they? Is, which, really? wow. Yeah, which isn't bad if you can find them. And so, and yeah, so I, and I like to have fun with this stuff. So as soon as I realized what I was going to do, no, as soon as the Vegas thing happened, happened actually, and we found out uh, that the Vegas card was actually real, I went online and I bought the, the, the last of a personal stock from this guy in Europe. Uh, so the card is in English, but the, the, the small print is in German. And uh, so I'm giving out, I think in the deck, and I bought six of them. I think I'm giving out four for the for the q a whoever is in there and i again i hope i hope people ask good questions and but again it's not about me it's about them uh, this is you know for a lot of people it's going to be their chance to hey ask me a question great fantastic and uh, the one of my favorite parts of the debate was the q a there there were great questions yeah all ages e even genevieve laurel's daughter asked one of the best questions i thought so. you know that that kind of started i mean you know conventions have been doing that for years but you really don't get i mean i've seen them at like I, again i'm a dork i've been to comic-con for literally for vacation <laughs> seriously I got a Sandy, just me san diego pennant hat and walk around superman <laughs> and uh, and literally, you'll have a room of a panel of like I don't know five, two or uh, thousands of people in this room, and the line. Oh my God, the lines of people that you know because they're just dying because they know it's like look, you're not going to be able to talk to some of these people that are up there. You just won't have a chance. There's there's only so much time to to have. So I'm hoping that uh, we get some good questions. And I sad I only get 45 minutes, but that's all right. I don't mind. That's fine. I get I get to do two things. I get to do the um, I get to do the the Q and A thing that I'm doing, and then I get to uh, co-host the video awards show with Patricia, the last event of the evening, and hopefully we will get to run long because that thing's only an hour, and we're giving out thirty awards, and you know how that goes. I mean, the Oscars. Oh, that's gonna take a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, because if people now, luckily, people when they go up and give speeches, a lot of people won't want to give speeches anyway. So, like, if Carly wins an award, I don't know if she's going to come up there with a little little crib sheet and say, okay, first of all, I'd like to thank, you know, the director. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, I, I guess I've got to rip up my speech now. Well, no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying <laughs> I'm just that, that, that some people will be like, just be like, yeah, they'll just shake, you know, wave and go, thanks, and leave. And not, because, you know, they don't want to be up there. So, you know, yeah, we're, I'm just we're, <laughs> we're not encouraging people to give speeches. Let's put it that way. There just isn't enough time because I got a funny feeling. I, this is my prediction that the hotel, what will happen is we'll run like 90 minutes and then the hotel will be sitting there tapping their watch on the outside going, look, dude, uh, <laughs> we got to shut this room down. So mm, right. anyway, uh, well, can you elaborate both you and Patricia um, and Carly? I'm not sure if the, the news crews have been following you as well but can you talk about that um, because it seems like they have done a lot of filming already with both of you is that correct and how is that going to be incorporated into is like the flat earth conference going to be the last segment of um, how are they doing that or do you have any idea yeah 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 I've told them and Patricia can chime in of course uh, yes. are you there Patricia yeah, I'm right here. Okay, just worrying. <laughs> just worrying. I, I, I know you're being professional and you're not talking. Yeah. The um, yeah, this is the climax of what they've been filming for the last oh god, a while now, months, months and months. To where this is it. After this, this is that. Then they go straight to editing, and up until now, they they've been doing, which is in interesting. You know, like with many documentaries, they're actually doing this in chronological order. So they went to Patricia's twice. Is that right? it's true? Houston twice. Patricia. Uh, yes, twice exactly. Twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Seattle twice, Houston twice, Denver. I don't know if they got up to San Francisco to see Jaron. Um, but they were shooting, so they were, they were shooting the people, some of the people that were going to be in it and just doing their own backstories, collecting media. And then they go to the, the conference, they shoot everybody else that they can, and then they go to editing and wrap it up and then either pitch it to some sort of production company or try to sell it at Sundance or both. Awesome. Awesome. Um, 
Well, they also followed you for the eclipse. Is that correct? So uh, yeah, that's part of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a kind of uh, a last minute thing uh, where, as you know, the eclipse, even though the moon is 2000 miles wide, the total blackout zone was only <laughs> 70 miles wide. Right. A little strange. <laughs> yeah. How you can microscope shadows? I don't know. Science apparently has an explanation. Can't duplicate it down here. But I digress. Uh, they came up to Seattle and then we drove down to Salem, Oregon. And we spent a couple days down there. And it, where and it was perfect. Absolutely beautiful. Perfect conditions. I mean, I heard you know, other parts of the country were not so great. But in Salem, Oregon, go figure. It was gorgeous. Uh, not a cloud in the sky. There were some forest fires to the to the east, but they were didn't have didn't affect us at all. And saw the whole thing. Uh, it was beautiful. We shot basically just they just kept the run, camera running for like two days, uh, you know, which means that's about ten minutes worth of footage. Mm -hmm. And it was it was great. And that they're, yeah, they're going to use that. Um, they'll use the time that Patricia and I spent down at NASA when we were down there. That was that was great. And they'll also use their, they also spent time in LA, you know, cause it's, it's an LA based team. They went to several meetups in Los Angeles. Uh, and geez, I completely forgot. They would, they met me at the Pasadena meetup just recently. I came down there because the Pasadena meetup said, Hey, if we fly you down and get your hotel. Will you come? It's like, okay. So I oh. went, yeah, I was like, all right, fly me down. Give me drinks. I'm cool. And, mm -hmm. and we did and, and Pasadena meet was outstanding and the, the documentary team shot that whole thing and they grabbed people out of the crowd and took them over to the park and shot them and made them sign the release forms and well not made them you know it wasn't gunpoint yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and it was great because yeah if you don't sign the release forms you can't be in it Right. And it was great. It, it turned out fantastic. So they, these guys are all out. Uh, I'm sorry, they're all in on this. I, if the rumor serves me correctly, they're going to send a six-man team to Raleigh, and that's not that's not shabby. I don't know how much oh, like awesome. I don't know how much Vice Media is going to send. They're going to be there. There's, there's a couple other documentary teams that are also going to be there, and these are just people we know of. Uh, the last-minute people, which are coming in, you know, between now and two weeks from now. Uh, I mean, I, if, if Jimmy Kimmel and Conan and those guys send a team, it's not going to shock me in, in the slightest at this point. Why would it? It's the most interesting because right now the news is really, really boring. There's mm -hmm. nothing going on. And that would be an interesting story for, for just about anybody. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, certainly with those guys being comedians, you know, the, um, they, it would be a lot of material for them to ridicule and oh, make God. fun of well, and all, you know. So. Well, think about it this way. A lot of people, just out of curiosity, are going to send groups down there because of what you were saying. Because they think, okay, there's got to be some comedic value to this. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to a Flat Earth convention. Oh, my God. What sort of characters are you going you gonna to see down there? You know, people with <laughs> literal tinfoil, people dancing around with, you know, funky music and uh, you know, doing all, you know, who knows what they're going to be doing in the parking lot type stuff. They're going to basically look for the, whoever stands out the most. And in, if they don't interview well, well then maybe, or, but they will talk to the conference people, you know, cause you really do want to talk. It's like, okay, who's speaking at this thing? So they absolutely are going to want, it's like, okay, who's influencing. And when they find out, I don't know what's going to scare them more. Uh, would it scare them more if they found crazy looking people or they found, would it scare them more if they all of a sudden started talking to the, the presenters and wait, wait, these are, these people are just normal like normal. People. They're, they look, they look <laughs> just That's like that. us. Wait, mm -hmm. how, how can we detect them? <laughs> you don't know. It's like, which is why the community has grown and grown and grown because heck, we don't even know. Uh, I'm, I do not, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that nine out of 10 people in the flat earth community are hidden they you do not know who they are because they right. they know but they're not going to come out you know they're in the closet because they they don't want to get ostracized by family and friends and co-workers mm -hmm. so but it but i've run into it i mean i i don't it's been a while let me tell you a quick story i know we're going to break here in a little bit the um that thing that happened to me when i left atlanta when i did i tell you that when i left atlanta i think i, I may have told kathy when i was coming through security uh, they they ran my bag through a secondary screen and I was wearing my I am Mark Sargent shirt because I, I thought that'd be fun to wear in the airport and this, <laughs> this kid he couldn't have been like more than 20 something he's looking at my bag and he goes it's your bag and I go yeah yeah 
and, and he and I'm walking towards him. He's looking at my shirt, looking at me, looking at my shirt, looking at me. And he goes, <laughs> and he goes, "Are you Mark Sargent for real?" And I go, "Yeah, man. Why?" And he goes, "And he'm not. I am not making this up, people." He looks at me. He winks, and he said, "Yo, man, that's my name too." And he gives me the bag without even checking it. And I'm just going, holy smokes. <laughs> There's flat earthers everywhere. everywhere and and nobody knows because we don't have any weird designators. You know, I, I, we don't wear pins and special stickers on our cars or anything. Mm -hmm. and, and the only reason he knew was, uh, was I was wearing the shirt. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was really, really cool. So at yeah, that, that point, really cool. that yeah. made my afternoon. And that wouldn't have happened hadn't I come down to visit you. Mm -hmm. Well, I was amazed you went and had lunch and you were talking and the waitress came over and she was yeah. a flat earther. Yeah, the bartender. But she didn't know you. No, she didn't know me. She didn't even she didn't even know there was a there was an event happening literally a uh -uh. hundred yards away in the hotel. So and she wasn't even serving our table. She was just a bartender. And all of a sudden she comes over and she she looks at she goes, You guys flat earth? And I go, yeah, why? And she goes, high five. And I go, holy <laughs> smoke. I go, you're flat earth? She goes, yeah. And and and, and I asked her, I go, do you have any favorites? She goes, no, I, I haven't been in it that long. And I'm going, holy. And so I gave her one of my uh, one of my press uh, re press release flash drives with all you know tons of information because she was trying yeah, to man. convince the the manager of the restaurant to be a flat earth. And you know he thought she was just some crazy female mm -hmm. bartender. But yeah, yeah, that both those things happened in a very short amount of time, and which is why I call it the flat Earth, the the world's secret guilty pleasure. Uh, and you're thinking, well, what do you mean by that? Is going, look, the Spice Girls sold 80 million copies, 80 million in two albums, 80 million copies. I don't know anyone who owns those albums. <laughs> the reason is, is because people are scared to tell people that they own a Spice yeah. Girls album. It's like, you know, they just turn it on, you know, put on their headphones, you know, tell me what you want, what you really want, you know, <laughs> they don't tell anybody. That's what Flat Earth is to a lot of people. And, and so where, when, yeah, we're, when we hit this, I know people think I'm, I'm being silly when I say critical mass, when it happens, you're going to have all these people all over the place going, yeah, I totally knew, dude. It's like, you knew? Yeah, I know. Is people there'll be groups of people just looking at each other. It's like, how'd you know? Because it, it can they keep it a secret mostly out of uh, to keep their ego in check. You know, to to make sure that people don't. You know, nobody wants to get hammered. You know, for uh, for for believing in something that sounds silly. So anyway, mm. sorry. I, I oh, ran well, I want to ask all three of you this since you're very. Um, well spoken and well known in the community. We're going to go uh, to Patricia first, then to Carly. Um, what have you seen, and how many? I mean, the awakening. How large do you think it is? Because yes, there are all these people out there that are not uh, have not come out of the closet, have not um, s stood up and said, "Yes, I'm a flat earther." They're totally incognito they just mesh with the rest of the uh the people but in the meetups that you've done in the groups that you are part of carly um how big do you think this awakening patricia i think like mark was saying it's a lot bigger than we know it's not just mm -hmm. youtube here we've got tfr with a lot of flat earth content providers on it and right. some are not and there are other uh places where you can find it as well. There's there's places like Twitch. I've never been on Twitch before, but they're hosting flat earth content. Uh, other places that can that it can go. Um, we don't really know what's going on. Out, I mean, I don't anyway. Outside of America, we know big things are because uh, we can go on YouTube and we see flat earth content being produced in other countries. I can't speak any other language except English, so I do know there's Spanish, I do know there's Japanese, I mean there's everything probably. Uh, Mark would know more about that. But it's it's a lot more than we know and just like here in where we speak English, we have the people that are active participants and then we have the people who are passive, meaning they just listen to things. They don't have a channel, they don't subscribe. Uh, they don't, uh, they, we don't know their names. So there's a mix of both, no matter where you go, no matter what country it is. So whatever your number you think it is, you could probably double it, maybe triple it. 
something like that. Mark? Yeah, yeah. Statistically, think of it this way. Uh, and wait, we got like a minute. The uh, statistically, even if it's just one percent of the U.S. population, that's over three million. That's just in the U.S. And I think it's way higher than one percent. The the stats that that chart I sent you, Patricia, oh god, months ago, where they were you know saying you know do you know did you always know? I mean, it was pushing ten, eleven percent which would be a huge amount of number, just the United States. I know that Flat Earth Indonesia is huge. Uh, the Russian version is huge. UK, obviously big. You know, they, they've had media looking at this thing. Europe has, has, a, has a big section in this. Uh, you want to have some fun, go in and type in Flat Earth in English and convert it to any language you want, then paste yeah. that version into YouTube and take a look. There's, or paste it into Google. There is a, it, it's big. It's really, really big. It is. It's big and it's secretive. It's not sinister though. It's. It's this cool inside, cool kids club that uh, everyone's. Everyone's getting on board, and you should too. All right, we'll be right back for final segment, and we'll open with Carly when we return. Be right back, everyone. We are TFR. My faith in destiny is all I need to prevail. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back, everybody, for final segment. Carly, I want to pose the same question to you, uh, especially since you are involved with so many of these different uh, groups, uh, Facebook groups, Flat and Happy and others. Um, what do you see with regard to uh, the awakening and with critical mass and us approaching this Flat Earth conference? I can only imagine that the after the conference... Um, you know, there's just going to be so much more energy and so many more, you know, as far as these videos and these documentaries and these films, all of that is going to be out there, too. It's going to just keep pushing more and more truth out to people and bringing more and more people to this revelation. Um, yes, I definitely see uh, absolute huge growth. And, um, you know, I have a very humble channel, so I totally understand it when... Someone doesn't know who I am, you know, and someone doesn't recognize my name, but just to put it into perspective, um, I'm involved in quite a lot of Facebook flat earth groups and I run quite a lot and we're talking tens of thousands of people that I interact with. Um, and I don't always, you know, when I'm following a comment thread and I'm uh, moderating, I don't always comment. I kind of keep silent and I watch what other people are saying. I, I observe quite often and people don't realize that but I I watch um, I watch what a lot of people do and say and not to make this sound like a negative thing there are people left and right that say you know they don't know who Mark Sargent is or they don't know who Patricia Steer is and some of the other voices in the community and you know what I think that's amazing because that to me is showing that this community is getting so exponentially large that pe people can't they can't keep track of it of each other you know what I mean like there's so much content mm -hmm. and there's so many voices out there now that there are just s huge factions of people that don't even know each other and I'm seeing that quite a lot here it it's very hard to keep track of um, and on top of that just from the a Facebook standpoint there are gigantic flat earth Facebook groups out there I mean there's one in Brazil that's uh, last I checked and that was a while ago was well over 50 or 60 thousand members wow. um, there's uh there's one that Nathan Thompson runs that is over seventy thousand members you know and that's just two of them and there wow. are hundreds and hundreds probably thousands of flat earth Facebook groups now granted a lot of people are members you know in multiple 
groups, but I mean, it's uh, people don't realize how big it is on Facebook unless they're involved. And then you also have like the YouTube content channels where I see people all the time that they, they don't have anything to do with uh, Facebook. And yet there's thousands, tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands. Sometimes I'm sure, uh, you know, once you get it all counted up that are following uh, content channels and have nothing to do with Facebook. So I would definitely say we're growing exponentially, um, and I can see that the Flat Earth Conference is going to be huge as far as our growth. Uh, I really see it um, growing in leaps and bounds after this. It's I don't see how it's not going to become more mainstream in a good way, and that this is this is kind of our goal. Like some people are afraid of it, or they they think we're commercializing it, or whatever their you know thoughts are, but isn't this the point is that we are trying to expose this to everyone, you know, mm-hmm. they can make their decision, but we're trying to get the truth out. We're trying to help people, you know, wake up. Uh, so I see this flat earth conference as that being the second most important thing. I think the first important thing is just all of us meeting each other. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, well, again, you know, with all the films, the documentaries and all that material, that is coming out all the books that we're bringing um it definitely there's a lot of material going to be available to the public which people can share giving people books giving people documentary robbie's scientism expose um and so all of that you know, you know it's just going to increase the growth um but but let me ask all of you this as well uh, why now do you think that this has to do with, as I believe, with the whole ancient alien that the cosmology, uh, the Darwinian, Copernican, all that is connected to that and that that is the next stage? Or how do you see why do you think all this is coming forth? And I'll just we'll go right back to you, Carly, then we'll go around Patricia and then Mark and then Kathy. Um, so are you asking why do you think this is coming out coming now? Coming to do you the think forefront, it's... yes. Right. I mean, the end of days, I mean, you know, right. what, what, yeah. I mean, a lot of people I know, you know, mentioned that they think that Flat Earth is a PSYOP um, and that it's being leaked on purpose. And, I mean, if you're talking about a psychological operation, if anything is a psychological operation and was being pressured and forced upon us and in our education system it's the the globe earth model the heliocentric model as far as it being allowed right i agree i mean it's hard to put the, those thoughts into words I, I mean i know that there are um the elite are in you know in charge and there's a lot of things that they control although i'd like to think of it more as in if anyone was going to allow this to leak and if anyone was planning this as far as timing, that I would be more apt to say that it was the creator, the one yeah, who intelligently absolutely. designed this. I mean, I think that this is, um, I think this was his plan all along. I think the globe earth model was part of the great or grand deception. Mm-hmm. And I do think we're kind of dwindling down to where it's going to um, be a tipping point. And I think that that's why many of us feel like this is what we've been preparing for, you know, for a bigger portion of our life. I, I look back on so many things that have happened to me that, uh, especially on the spiritual side, that I'm thinking to myself, you know, this, these things have happened to me specifically to prepare me for this truth coming out and sharing it with others as well. Just things that have happened mm-hmm. in my life, you know, so that's kind right. of my thoughts on that. And I think this is also another reason why so many are impassioned about this as topic. Patricia? I think sometimes that the flat earth revelation, uh, the awakening, is in some ways a test for all of us as individuals and as mankind in general. Now, you can't say that people are being tested who haven't been made aware of it, but if, uh, if awareness crosses your path enough time so that you actually notice it, Uh, Because we all know that things can go across your mind and you don't notice them. It takes a while for it to sink in. Mm -hmm. That's why TV commercials, you know, have to repeat, repeat, repeat before you remember to go buy a Coke to drink. Um, It's a test because how you react to that is, is it puts you in the category of someone who can 
help with this truth or who might hinder this truth? Maybe that sounds bad to say that. That might make people angry to say that. But I really do see it that way. If people react with anger and try to hurt others when they hear about this, they're so mad that they want to really literally destroy people's reputations, um, that it, it, you're automatically actually put in a camp of people who aren't here for the betterment of all. You just aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, same question. Uh, I, first off, I think both those answers were outstanding. Uh, and <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I would tend to also go with Carly's uh, idea about a, a much grander plan. I kind of see it as an inevitability, which there were civilizations before us and there'll be civilizations after us. And all the evidence that we see on the ground now was that this system was designed with a beginning and an end. Uh, and it and it was also a test and when we were only supposed to be here so long I mean look at the sunken cities off of Japan the sunken cities mm -hmm. off of India the Bosnian pyramids go on and on and on okay. that we this system is a giant school for lack of a better word you know if, if this world can only be one of three things or a combination of three things um, either education entertainment or confinement uh, if it can't be pure entertainment, otherwise more people would be having a great time. And, and it seems hmm. that human beings do, not to steal a movie line, do seem to define their reality through misery and suffering. Mm -hmm. um, if it was just confinement, well, it's a pretty spectacular jail, if that's the case. You know, I haven't seen a jail jail made like this with all the diverse wonderful things that were created uh right. it kind of it, it's always felt to me since the beginning is kind of like a school uh kind of like an education system where when you go to school yeah it's fun sometimes and you're somewhat confined but you're there to learn something most of the time right. and at the end at the end what will we learn you know was this a test for us was this like carly was saying was the globe put into this system as a test for us because you know can could we come back from it it's like oh yeah by the way you're insignificant now we're going to make you relevant again and mm -hmm, when right. that happens and if it happens god i hope it does mm -hmm. uh it will be the beginning of something profound at least to us and and something that we'll remember you know to our dying days yeah, maybe absolutely. a test in the way that uh another way of testing is can we figure it out Right. right, it's right. like a Rubik's cube. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, what, yeah. What, what is this group of humans going to do? Let's yeah, see. yeah. No, it's a good, that's a good one. You got five thousand years. Can you figure out where you are in five thousand years? There's a lot or, that has to go on. Or it's are like, we worthy of figuring it out, especially yeah. when we, you know, fight amongst each other? And and that's mm -hmm. and that's part of the slowdown process. Yeah, you're right. If we were all this harmonious unified group like the tower of babel group for example could solve this thing in two seconds but the fact that we squabble kind of like it was something i thought about today and that is what if god took the answer and carved it up into puzzle pieces and scattered it amongst you know amongst the countries mm -hmm. the countries would have to work together to solve it but when they fight and when they go to war it slows down the process oh you know it slows it down to a complete crawl and sometimes, you know, some countries still have blood feuds that, that never end. And now we're getting, finally get to the end here. It's close. It's, we're, we're, we're right on the cusp of this thing. Uh, the question is, will the powers that be try to, try to turn it in a direction? Or do they know it's inevitable, in, inevitable as well? Not sure. Uh, I think another reason why all of this is coming out at this time is to show us the flip side of it. And that the... The matrix, the you know, the powers, the eye at the top of the Illuminati pyramid, that there is an organized evil that is trying to uh, foment and force upon us this system, uh, this matrix of belief, this deception that keeps everybody locked into just distraction and delusion and being lost, uh, you know, and as far as the larger the grander reasons of why we are here what all this is about sure. and so yeah the and so you know they satan has kept most people locked into just trying to survive and nobody has really even time to 
prioritize the kingdom and but this is bringing it to the forefront and uh, forcing us all to reconsider everything that we thought we knew um yeah Kathy, no sorry go ahead go ahead Kathy, and then we'll go back to mark well i think it's really interesting that this year is the 500th anniversary of the reformation and martin luther and i have this one quote i'd like to read that the author said, I've been bringing some books back, uh, Kings of Throne, Earth Stands Fast, 50 Reasons. They, they wrote in the late 1900s, I mean, late 1800s, early 1900s, and, and they were not clouded by the mind control from NASA, from uh, the movies, the propaganda that, that we are under. Uh, and Luther said, they should know that one word of God is all, and all are one. If the Bible is false in one, it is false in all. This is a just and logical saying. If the Bible errs in astronomy, geology, physics, chronology, etc., then you can also, in theological questions, believe in it only so far as you have, from other sources, convinced yourself of the correctness of its statements. If the Copernican system is correct, then Genesis is a myth. Is scripture which has enlightened the world for thousands of years now to be eclipsed by a science which has erred so often and is altogether fallacious in so many things? Much indeed is at stake. Satan is bold. A false principle of an immense import is practiced. Namely, they falsify scripture by totally ignoring words that do not suit them or by discarding the right and obvious meaning and sense and by inserting a different meaning. Yeah, you know, uh, with regard to the cosmology, I think God is forcing us, he's drawing a line in the sand and forcing us to, to look at it either through science and NASA and believing in uh, all the lies that are perpetuated and put forth by them or and in the inerrancy of scripture. And, um, and so this is the line that a lot of people are being forced to, uh, to reconsider and to reassess. Um, I'm going to go to each of you and give you a chance for, um, you know, comment. And we'll, we have like probably enough time for two comments from both of you. So um, as far as why do you think this is important and what do you hope to see come out of the conference? Um, Mark, we'll start with you and then we'll go to Patricia and Carly. All right. Why do I think the, the flat earth is important? Yeah. Just the, in general? Oh, yeah, well, the line in the sand, you know, this whole question of NASA or God or yeah, you know, all yeah, that. it's it's important. Well, at least it's important to me because it answers a massive question, which all of us entertain since we're children, which is, are we alone? Mm. And look, it's this question that nobody can answer because you know science will tell us you can't be answered. Oh yeah, they'll tease you every once in a while, say, well, there's probably life on other planets, planets we define anyway. You know, planets mm -hmm. that we tell you what what's where's life and wh what it's supposed to be, but they never actually you know even though but at the same time they hide any life that that rears its head from time to time. You know, I have no doubt that there are remnants of older civilizations flying around with high tech engines, and the 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 powers that be aren't gonna aren't gonna release that. But yeah, it it answers that question and and the real basic one. You know, if, if people are hearing this for the first time, the real basic premise of this is. If it is flat, regardless whether it's a dome or not, if it was flat, then it was created. If it was created, there's a creator, and if there's a creator, you were never alone. Not mm -hmm. you know, you were you you were all you always had someone with you. And that should be very comforting. Now, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna define that after that, but that mm -hmm. should be very comforting to a lot of people. And that's what it that's what it meant to me, and that's why I was brought back into spirituality was because of this i mean and a lot I, email after email after email that i get from people saying the same thing which is i fell away from god and now i can't it's not that it's not like they were pull, pulled in drag, kicking and screaming it's like all of a sudden it dawned on them and they walked back on their own power to it right, i mean it's like right. you can't because really you try to be an atheist i'm, I'm not going to babble anymore you try to be an atheist and be a flat earther it is tough it is extremely yeah. Yeah. extremely difficult yeah and then you know the other side of that with regard to the ancient civilizations and cultures is 
who were these um, these dragon-like entities, or who were these um, fallen angels, or you know the archons, as it says in some of the texts, right. uh, the the watchers, and what side are they really on? You know, yeah. so that's a, that's it's, another whole thing. It's a tough call because again, yeah. not, not real quick, and that is, you, yeah, I know what you're talking about, and what we're my version of it is okay if we are version seven let's say just take a pick a number you know go back who was version one and was version one trapped in here and you don't forget you know as far as their intentions all the great stories have great villains mm -hmm. so uh, i would kind of lean that you know they have nefarious purposes but you never know right. you never right. know yeah i agree patricia well, it was it was interesting because I know the uh, the initial question, but it's taking me somewhere totally different than answering yeah. the initial okay. question, mm -hmm. which is, you know, if we are if there was version one and we're version, let's just say, for example, seven, and um, each version has to be swept from the earth and a new one to start. Well, that's kind of scary because we're reaching a point in awareness where it would be the time that we would, or in the past in the Bible, would it be because of wickedness? Well, we also are kind of wicked. Mm -hmm. And is the, is our awareness g g allowing us to stay here longer? Are we actually, through this exploration, uh, keeping ourselves alive? Or no matter what we do, even if we bring this to mainstream, and everyone discovers as a creator, still, version eight's coming in. Regardless, and what does the Bible say? Uh, that uh, no more uh, water, next time fire. I mean, that's what somebody told me. I don't mm -hmm. know if yeah. that's true, yeah. but uh, true. Right. so I mean, we're doing all this, and you know, in the end, it's into the frying pan or you know, the fire. So, well, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the crucible, you know, and but a lot of times that's what refines the gold and brings out the purity of a. Yeah, and as far as refining all of us, and so that we right. are forced with, through this challenge, um, Carly. Um, as far as why I think flat Earth is important, I'm kind of going to go from a perspective of why it's important to me for my experience, because yeah. it's very hard to say why it's important to everyone else. I mean, there's so many options, um, but for me, uh, and maybe similar to everyone else here on the panel, is it has brought me closer to a creator it's it's um refreshed my spirituality it's given me um a whole new education and uh, an enthusiasm for nature and to the point where it brings me to tears to be outside and looking at everything so differently and and it making sense you know nice. i feel like i went a very long time definitely questioning the heliocentric model and never really feeling like that made sense. I mean, how terrible is that to live your entire life and feel like your home doesn't make sense? You know, it doesn't feel right. Um, I also, and I talk about this very often, that to me it's not as much about the shape of the earth. I mean, I could care less the sizes of the continents and where they are placed on a map although I think that's romantic and it's exciting and I love learning about those things. Mm. But to me, it's so much more important is that the majority of us that are truly in this for genuine reasons are realizing that because this earth has been created with a purpose and that it is intelligently designed, that how much more important we are to each other right. and how much right. potential we have as humanity and to me, it's becoming more and more of a struggle on, I mean, daily, talking to people about, you know, you're completely losing the point. You know, you're, I, I consider them flat earthers in name only because they're not, you're really not graduating to the, to the point of realizing why we are learning about this. It really has nothing to do with proving the shape of the earth, you know? Right. Um, we have to learn how to be social again and, and respectful and love each other like truly love each other and i think we've so far lost all that and to me that's what's important that's my goal that's my mission that's what i've been prepared to do i think another thing and then we'll go back to each of you for a final comment is that if they have lied to us about this and we have accepted without question without ever second guessing uh, that what they told us was, was true with regard to the cosmology. What else are they lying to us about? 
And so, you know, it forces us to reconsider everything. And we can't believe anything that they've told us. And we have to really reconsider truth in all facets. And and so that's uh, that's both exciting and scary. Uh, Mark, we're going to go to you and then back around again. And uh, we'll finish up with final commentary. We've got four minutes. Um, what am I doing? Uh, just final comment. <laughs> oh, oh, final comments. Uh, if you haven't looked into Flat Earth yet, you know what? No, everyone that's listening to this probably has looked into Flat Earth. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, I'd like to address something really quick, which is there's a lot of, because there's we've been doing this now for a couple of years, there's a lot of new models and people trying to explore the maps and trying to, what Carly was saying, you know, trying to define the shape and, and everything. And there's been a, a model recently that's been pushed, the four-dimensional model is what I call it, the 4D model. Just so I can say this on the record, I've never hated that model, and I'm not going to hate it. The problem is, is that I still, remember, I'm the Flat Earth Tour Guide. I deal with new people. I'm, I'm the freshman orientation guy. They come to me, and I have to show them a model, and i got to show them something that I can physically hold in my hand. So what I try to push to people is the, you know, the UN flag, the azimuthal map, dome or no mm -hmm. dome really doesn't make a difference. And the only reason I'm pushing that is because I don't have anything better that's simpler. Remember, to, to win this war, you still have to get to the lowest common denominator. And that's the bulk of the population. We're talking knuckle draggers, mouth breathers. And you know, I'm sure all your listeners are fine, educated, upstanding people. <laughs> but, but there's a lot of dumb people out there. And I, that's why I do that. So I'm going to be keep pushing what I'm pushing. I know people get tired of me doing the interviews and saying the same things over and over. That's my thing. Sorry, that's my no, last right. comment. Yeah, you're educating. And that's what we're all here to do. Uh, Patricia, I'll give you a chance for final comment, too. We've got a minute and 30. Well, I have to say that no matter what you're doing, if you're doing it uh, to put to, to to help others, then you're doing a great thing. If you're looking at this the square map, uh, 3D map, or the no matter what, whatever map you're looking at, that's great. If you no matter what you're doing, you're doing experiments, or you're having conversations with other people, or you're playing more of a supportive role. You're doing sort of the flat Earth tour guide 101, flat Earth for dummies, like Mark does. Sorry to use the word dummies and you, Mark, in the same <laughs> sentence. Uh, or, I know, I know. Um, but, or if you're doing something very intellectual on a high level, if you're doing it for this cause, and also you're including the creator, the fact that we are, you know, not a, a function of a big bang, we're not nothing, we're something, and we're important, then I think you're doing something great. And I encourage people to just do that. Uh, I don't mean positive and Pollyanna. And I mean, because there's some dark things we deal with here. There's some right. spiritual warfare really going on. Right. Um, but but to do good for other people when you can, that's what this is all about. Yeah, amen. And uh, we're going to have to leave it with that. I apologize. We've run out of time. But I want to thank each of you for your willingness to come on with us and uh, I know Kathy looks forward to meeting all of you at yes. the conference Frequency radio is your be blessed all good night Shalom. thank you thanks guys uh, thank you love you guys love, love you too. good night thank you good night all good night John boy <laughs>